everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today we are going to be painting this gorgeous witch taking a soak in her bubbly cauldron. On the mic to help me do that Hello. is my husband, John. Hi, guys. I just gave him an awkward intro. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> awkward <laughs> intro. I like the awkward intro. Do you? It makes it's, me feel stilted. It's <laughs> very authentically us. So what do we do here? We teach uh, art for free live. Um, some recorded, but live streams, and yeah. this is the 13 days of Halloween. So we're live at like every day for 13 days. We do a class for you about Halloween. We've done this a few years now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. We have some like 80 Halloween lessons now at this point. When does it become an overwhelming? When is too much? When have we had too many Halloween lessons? I don't, I don't know. know that's possible. I don't know. We're trying to find out the boundaries and the limits. So this is what we're doing. We're doing this in acrylic paint. Today, the special tools we're going to be using are these round pouncers. Now, you can just paint circles. These are just a great tool to make easy work of those circles. And I'm going to show you a trick to make them seem like bubbles, even though they're a fantasy color. Mm. I'm going to show you how to uh, freehand this in. But there is a traceable. We were just talking about the traceable in the live. Traceable. So if you're having trouble with your traceable and... Um, you just try re-downloading it. Sometimes it, when, when you're downloading, they can, and you try to open it too fast, it can get wonky. I get ha I've, I've done that. I have, uh, John sent me images and I've gotten to kind of like, I clicked them too soon or something. I don't know. With tech, right? Do we really, yeah. any of us know? No, yeah, just really know. But so I click it and it gives me like half an image. So that's my go-to hack. If that isn't working, definitely write us at support at the mm -hmm. And you know why? Why? You know why? Why? Because we have a tracker over there. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> this is true. We, we know have we what do, we said. <laughs> we do have a trouble tracker. So we do on on Facebook. I do not. I have no idea what's happening over there. All no. the time, I run into some weird message. I'm like, it would have probably been good to know at the time. You know, intense stuff. Intense stuff going on in my world. Do you guys love this? I I'm love really it. This into is, her. I'm really looking forward to this one. So all the materials, if you guys want to know, what the heck is she using in this lesson? Like, what do I got to go buy? They're all in the description below. And there's also some exchanges because maybe you have a kit that you got that had like 48 colors of paint. And you're like, I have all those colors, but not those colors. It's okay mm. because there's some substitutions written there that you can totally use. But just use what you have in the kit. Don't ever uh, stress about it. But if you want to try what I'm using, I certainly do tell you exactly what it is. So you can give it a try if you like what you see here. Uh, that is not a sponsored thing. That is just me. Just you. Now this has just gone weird, <laughs> weird, no, weird. I'm going to say that we're painting on a nine by twelve <laughs> artboard today. <laughs> and as we are one to do, we have wishes and intentions on the board. Mm. Uh, hope and health for everyone, and healing for anyone who needs it. And then finally, today's such a simple day: a safe, readily available vaccine. Mm. I don't have anything further to add to that because I don't know what that looks like. Uh, I would have, I will trust doctors to tell me what that looks like, but I like one of those. Mm. I'm going to just take a wet brush, a wet brush, and I'm going to brush my words out there. We put those into the wishes ether. out out there. Now the trick to this is this is a big, wide, inexpensive brush. So I'll use this because mm -hmm. you can get these in packs at most craft and art stores. And I'm going to load this both sides with white at first. And the reason I want to load and kind of pre-paint this surface white a little bit is so that when I come in and do the other streak, it's going to flow better and blend better and also be lighter. But for that to work, I got to kind of come through here fairly quickly. You can kind of see I'm moving with purpose. Yeah. All right. Every once in a while you see an artist and what are they doing? They're moving with purpose across the canvas. They have a goal. They know where they're going. You don't want to get this too wet because you don't want the surface to bow, as will sometimes happen with artboards. But you want it wet enough to be able to do the next part, which is to take a smidge, gosh, just the smidgiest smidge of blue paint and then uh, purple paint coming from the other direction. And we're going to just kind of come up and make some of these streaky streaks. Mm. Which are in Halloween colors, yeah? Yeah. In my world they are. I don't I don't really know. I really <laughs> grow up with Halloween. <laughs> so I can't do it. So the irony of me doing a thirteen day event of Halloween is 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 
real funny. So you're, I'm just going to zoom in. This is very streaky. This is supposed to be super streaky. Super streaky. That's the idea is the streaky background. I think the streaky background is one of the first backgrounds that I had taught on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I think it is. Well, it's a, it's a good one to get down. <laughs> because once you sort of like, because it can Certainly apply was rainy, it can adopt, it could be, you know, sort of, yeah. it, it's very flexible. It's a very flexible background. When you have the blue in mm -hmm. with purpose, I'm going to come get a little bit of purple. Purpose. With purpose. Purple. Well, sometimes I paint without purpose. I'm just kind of meandering. Purposeless purple. I'm, uh, sometimes I paint from kind of a purposeless space. Let's go. A little bit of purple there. Flip the brush over and kind of getting some of those little there. lovely streaks in if you need them. And it creates a rather nice, pretty effect. Kind of makes her uh, bath time seem a little magical too in my mm. mind. There we go. Just... Hinting with a little bit of this. And you can see, a less is more. A lot of times I will try to get less on there. Ooh, you put a little white in there, make it a little streaky. Yeah, I add a little white. And I'm just trying to kind of make the bottom okay. feel a little more blue and the top feel a little more purple. So here's a good question. I have a hopefully a good answer, but you know this is live, so we never know. Let's find out. So it, if you're... Doing the streaky thing, mm -hmm. and, and you do too many streaks, it becomes mm -hmm. sort of even-toned and bland. Well, it wouldn't be too many streaks. It's that you blend all your streaks together. So oh, if you well, so overwork you, the surface, you right, you go over the same spot on the surface again and again, it yeah. will take your streaks away. Oh, so it's just blending, not turning bland? Yeah. So how yeah. do you re-energize it with some streaks? You would go back over with the same technique, just layering. They'll come back. You just have to layer. And do you do it when it's wet or dry? If it's super homogenized, you may want to do it when um, it's dry and just start the whole process over. But what you'll find is that your paint will glide beautifully the second time, mm. as it is wont to do, and that you may have an easier time uh, getting that effect. See, now we're coming up the opposite way. I like the little blue up energy that I had going in there. I like. Mm. Again, I think this background would work for a lot of things. This would be a nice spring background if you wanted to create a little sprig of florals and a hummingbird. Uh, this would be a nice background to do. Like a good uh, background for a floral. Sometimes things are just interesting and good backgrounds. And I'm pretty happy with that. Like. I like it. Generally, I just look at it and I'm like, oh, when that feels sort of magical and interesting and, and nice to me, that's when I consider it sort of done. I'm going to rinse out my brush mm -hmm. right across everything, and I'm going to sip my coffee now. Sip your coffee. I'm going to sip my coffee now. You may sip your beverage at home. Could mm. it be tea? It could be. Could it be juice? It could be. Could be anything. I don't know. I don't know. It could be pop. Could be. I have. I could have be a, soda. I have a prototype could, could mug. Could be an artisanal soda. I don't know. You, so, you have a sip with me. We, we made coffee at the same time. Oh, and I need mine heated, though. Compare. See, just compare heat. Oh. I'm curious. See how hot, just a regular mug versus thermal mug. Where are you at? I, well, yours is definitely hotter, but you can okay. go microwave mine, and I'll answer some questions. Uh, okay. All right. Polinary says, hi, everybody. Hi, Cinnamon. Hi, John. Hi, Mods. Yum, cupcakes. Thanks, Irene. Um, oh, the calendar? What calendar? Oh, gosh. John's giving me talking points. Let's go over some talking points. Let's go over some talking points while you guys drop hot chocolate in the feed. Um, so if you go to our website, theartsherpa.com, there is a calendar there, and if you want to get to the event page where we might have traceable or more resources, you can find that from there. You can click on it. You can plan events. You can set reminders. You know, if you're like, you want to look ahead and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Like, I know a lot of you are looking forward to Oya, and she's in like, I don't know, 12 days now, 13 days now. Um, 
you might want to go set a reminder on her because she's going to be a multi-stage class because you know we're going to get deep with her. Um, if you want to take part in the next event, you're going to want to definitely be signed up over on the website so you get the newsletter. Uh, we're still trying to find out from the tech team what the deal is with the newsletters, um, if they're in your dashboard or not. Uh, have not got a confirmation on that, but we are working on it. And if not in this version of the website, the next one, it will for sure darn it be there. And honestly, hopefully, global texting. Because oh, I would so like that. Actually, I got a really good message from a unknown text company solicitor who said, <laughs> hey, we have some cool new texting services we'd like to share with you. Yeah, you love how like every spammer on the planet calls you, I don't need a car warranty. Mm. I'm going to say this right now to everyone selling a car warranty. Stop calling me. I don't want it. I don't want to extend the warranty on my car. I don't want to do any of that. But if you have a texting service that you can give me good rates globally, why don't you spam me? Why can't we pick happen. our spam? Some spam is useful. Do you know what? I approached a criminal element on Facebook in an effort to find out what was how they were sourcing their texting. <laughs> I catfished the catfisher trying to find out who was sourcing. Hey, hey. Guy who keeps texting me with all those crazy advertisements. Who do you use as your texting service? I have no. I'm. Ah! Pretty, it's because it's really good, but I don't. I don't want your stuff. I just want to know who you. I don't. Using. I don't want. I don't want your weird con. I just want your texting service. I'll pay you a finder's fee to criminals take commissions. I don't know. I'm gonna try this. So, yeah. You can see what we talk about all that kind of stuff. Um. Oh, you're back fast. I'm going to show that. Hi, uh, Yashika uh, Delve. I will try to look for that out on Instagram. All I right. see that. So, yeah. So, thank you, guys. Um, generally speaking, if you're curious about our licensing poly, you, policy, poly, a policy, you can always email support at theartsherpa.com. Or if you're in, if you have a business and you'd like to teach our lessons in your sip and paint or in your other instruction, we have a program called Licensing and Business Support. You can find that by going to theartsherpa.com and clicking on Labs or Licensing, and you'll find out information more about that. It is not dry yet. Why is that not dry? Mm. I'm gonna go again. Okay. And so that will include things like if you're wanting to. You know, we don't allow mechanical reproductions of derivative of works, so you can't paint a painting that cinnamon taught and then print them on T-shirts. But uh, you know, we we also have T-shirts for sale. So we do. That's why we want. There's probably stuff in that. If you check the merch, we uh, have a bunch of mer we got the ghost gnome merch, the two ghost gnomes, and then of course we have our uh, Winifred face mm -hmm. temporarily while the 13 days of Halloween are going on. Oh my goodness, sir. Oh my goodness. How's everybody doing? Uh, John, I use Textedly for texting service at work. Yeah, I was gonna yeah say, they're that, not cheap enough globally. They're not, yeah, they're very expensive and not global. So yeah, that's, that's a big we're... problem. We got to be global. Let's draw out our cauldron, sir. Mm. So the first thing I'll do is I just want to give myself kind of a bottom to the cauldron and I need room for the fire. So, so as you have seen me want to do, I will make a mark using my T-square across okay. the bottom of the canvas. And I'm leaving, let's say this is just a little over two inches. So I think if you wouldn't want it to be under two because you've got to have room for the reflection. I mean, the shadow and the fire and all the things. Mm -hmm. Now, to get the cauldron, I'm going to kind of loosely sketch a fat little circle. A cauldron? Mm-hmm. You know, this actually inspired me. Cauldron, hot tub, something, right? Really? No, it did. <laughs> it inspired me. I was thinking, wouldn't it be really cool to put a cauldron hot tub in? Uh, She's like, mm, you, you. I don't know. Breaking brain. And don't do it during show. That's an unfair couple tactic. <laughs> don't get me to agree to stuff while I'm teaching. a. Hey, sir. <laughs> right. You know, so, that's right. Raise the top of my cauldron. <laughs> And I'm going to flare out the lid, as you do, and kind of bow it up, as I also do. So I just kind of get this little sketch, and I'm using a chalk tool. This is a tailored chalk tool. You could just use chalkboard chalk if you wanted to, right? 
And so, you know, we've got to have her here. So I'm going to bring up some shoulders. Actually, weirdly, a little bit of just a, a bump here. Shoulder width apart, they say. And again, if you're not into drawing, no stress on that, guys. I'm going to add a little head space up here just to want to hang the hat. It's okay. Um, drawing is a skill. It's a wonderful skill. I highly encourage that you learn it as part of your art journey. But if you're not there yet, use the traceable. It lets you get the image in without freehanding. And it is not cheating. I'm going to make my little hat circle, which I like to do. Seeing my head ellipse, it kind of helps me get the perspective. So that when I come here and put a hat band on her, I know where I want my hat band to go. And then I can and I talk about this wonderful witch's sort of hat happening here that she's got. A nice big one. Now, her arms are going to come down to about here on both sides. And then they do an interesting up over the cauldron. We're going to get into that a little more seriously later. But right now, we've just got to make sure that we've got, that we know girlfriend here is doing the hot tub overarm. Y'all know what that is. You've seen it, hot tub overarm. And what's great is hot tub overarm spares you hand drawing, which I know is not y'all's favorite. <laughs> so. Okay, so when you have that in, you kind of know where things are going to go. And the first thing you want to put in, believe it or not, are uh, the first layer of bubbles. You're going to do two layers of bubbles, so it'll be important to have some water aside so that your bubbles are um, not drying on your little pouncer. All right. Oh, wonderful suggestions about texting services. And uh, actually, Callie Beasley, the Life Book Taster Session. Check your um, uh, newsletters. It is being extended a week. Mm. So those of you, if you wanted to get on that free class, my kitty is today. It's going on right now. Um, I will try and grab you guys a link because I have one of those. i got to go to the Google Docs app. So... Um, Basically, it is 30 teachers each have a 30 minute class that you can take advantage of, including myself, and it gives you a chance to, where is the links there? I know I have links. Which I gave myself like the links for um, the life book. Oh, we'll get some life book links. Hold on a second. We'll find those. Oh, my goodness. All right. I can't get them for you guys. Hopefully, my moderator has the taster session link. We'll find it. I we hope so. Them. Yeah. we can Because I don't have it. I have failed. I have failed you. You're live home. painting. You shouldn't have to worry about that thing. Well, I would, but no links are there. So, <laughs> let's see. I've got to worry about it if there's no link. Um, so, basically, you would click that link. You sign up. And also, they're giving away uh, free classes to Lifebook. But you've got to be in that taster session group, I think, to be in the drawing. So, uh, definitely hop on that if you were thinking about it, at least for the cat class today, because it's so cute and easy. And you want it. You want this class. Mm. So, hopefully, my moderators will find that link that I could not find. I have failed you, but hopefully, they will not fail you. Well, I was, it's actually, I think I got pretty close. Hmm? I Googled it, and I came pretty close. No, no, no. You can't do the Google link because oh. it doesn't have an affiliate. Don't oh, drop fine. that one, Not please. Okay. Oh, there uh, it is. Uh, I, I think they, she just dropped it. Yep. I clicked it. Um, and it I us. don't yep. know, Moderator Viridian, if that is that information correct. I'm not sure if that information is correct. I just went correct. to it. Okay. It, it brings us to the right page. Okay. I see it. All right. I, I know that it might. It just may not be the affiliate link. It is. Okay. It says affiliate 147 at the top of the page. Yes. But this is for the 2021 year. Oh, well, this brings us this to the 2020 This one says for 2020. Yes, this is the 2020 page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <laughs> while they're still figuring that out, All right. we'll get that information for you guys. Um, yeah, make sure we've got the right link before you click. Uh, Here, tell you what. You want me to... I'm going to take, this is my mid-size. If you have my pouncers, this is sort of, to give you an idea, this is just about an inch across. And how we load is we come to the, 
green paint. We put out phthalo green and we put out medium yellow ozo and we twist together and it's sort of loosely mixed. And that way when we come here and I am going to take out some of what I drew, mm. but that's so that these feel layered because we want them to feel layered. I'm gonna come right here and then maybe put another one next to it, and I'll bounce it up. You can get more paint on there if you want, so they each have a different little color. Twist back, so it's a two directional twist. One there, that's a nice one. And again, we'll put any bubbles that we lose back um, or any lines that we lose back. So just go for it. I'm going to add a little more yellow. And then maybe a little more green. And I just come to the edge and get that. Hmm. You can see I can come back over any bubble and strengthen it. All right. Getting those. Don't let this dry out. So definitely put this where it can stay wet because you've got to layer it again. And now we've got to do some small bubbles. So here's my small pouncer. You can see it's a lot smaller. I'm going to load with much more green this time. I'm going to load with both sides. Did you guys find the link? They did. Yay! Unbelievable team. I'm so sorry I didn't get that out to you guys before the show. I really apologize. I don't do this to make more work for everybody. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You're live. We're just trying to get to this stuff for you while you're doing this. All it's right. Okay. So we're coming here and we're pouncing out bubbles, pouncing out bubbles. And there's some fun stuff to do, I think. And those look pretty, pretty bubblicious. They don't look bad. I might, uh, come in here and, and get that bubble a little more of a center. These are fun. So again, put this to the side in some water where it's not going to dry on there just in case you need it again. Next stage, you got to dry it again. All right. So while that's drying, don't, for don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. That when you click on that, then it'll allow you to click on the bell. And if you click all, when we go live, you'll be able to get notifications and things like that. Always awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put some pink out here and I'm going to put some black out. I'm going to paint in first the cauldron and start the hat and then we'll get some skin tone in here and all the other little details sort of up there. Let's take a um, round brush and get it wet with a little bit of water in our back paint. You can see I'm coming in and adding a little water and flipping the brush over to load it. And then let's just sketch back in what we lost. Oh, all right. We're going to be layering bubbles over this anyways. You just want to paint the whole thing black. Now, if you don't have a pouncer, what would you suggest? I would suggest just very carefully doing uh, circles that are about an inch and a half inch in diameter by hand with a brush. Hmm. It's just a little slower. Perfectly good way to do it. Um, and, you know, and again, some people like to use a cotton ball. Um, that's really up to you. I think... Uh, the pouncers are great as a time saver, but I think you're just as fine just hand painting little round bubbles. Now, don't worry too much about your cauldron because it's going to have a roaring fire underneath it. Mm. So that'll be helpful to it. Yes, I imagine so. I'm along here, I'm give it a nice little curled edge. This is a number 12 uh, silver white round. It will do a perfectly good job. Oh, that's very nice. Hmm. So one of our members here said from Sapphire Eyes says, 
The doctor diagnosed me with PTSD after 30 years of service in law enforcement. And, you know, while I'm dealing with that, she said the Art Sherpa will help me know the initial initial stand for painting to stop depression, and it does. PTSD, painting to stop depression. That is just beautiful. First, thank you so much for your service. Second, that is super clever. Yeah, that really is. That is is very clever. And and I do think painting helps. And we do have a lot of people in law enforcement, uh, especially the law enforcement that is exposed to a little more of the more intense um, side of it, which I think is, is, is probably a lot to deal with. You know, we all kind of watch cop shows like from this uh, very safe armchair, but imagine if for any reason any of that was real for you. That would be very stressful and upsetting. And, you know, please uh, feel free to email support at theartsherpa.com because I'd love to be able to touch base with you about that. That's a big subject. But Big we, subject, but and, we do and appreciate, a worthwhile subject. Yeah, and we appreciate your your support and uh, and service. So thank you very much for doing that. So you just want a nice big black cauldron. Mm. You can handle that. You can handle it, rinse out your brush fairly well, get the black pigment out of it, and then you can come underneath. You can add a little blue to your purple if the purple is not uh, perhaps dark enough. And I'm going to just bring a little bit of a kind of shadow space. It's just the brush on its toe back and forth, and kind of casting a little bit of an indirect shadow. Weirdly, I do mean weirdly. There we go. All righty. <sighs> I'm going to dry this again. And the reason I keep drying is so that I don't uh, drag paint mm. all over the canvas on my arms as I am wont to do. Yeah, I totally get that. All right. So, yeah, as she said, make sure you thoroughly dry that. And uh, I didn't want to talk over her while she was uh, while she was teaching there. But, yeah, we guys, we really, really appreciate your service. All the first responders, all the nurses out there, you know, all of the the public service folks i mean you put yourself out there for the benefit benefit of us all and it takes a toll um you know we have nurses who uh you know they help people through a lot of things you know from life to death and that brings a toll on everyone so we appreciate those things and oh questions to answer while i get to sip coffee so thank you guys we appreciate it My cup questions. does not keep my coffee as mm. warm as your cup keeps yours. Uh, I have not reheated mine. I'm, I know. I'm so jealous. Do you use mm. the Sherpa soap on your Let's pouncers see. as well? Test. Yes, I do. And it is um, fantastic for cleaning them. E- even the, when I accidentally dry paint on, it's done a pretty good job of recovering them. So I do use it. I don't necessarily do the, the loofah on the sponge because I want to tear up the sponge. Uh, but I have lightly done that. Um, I know sizing isn't standard, says Callie Beasley, but does this number 12 compare to the TES number four? It does not compare. Um, it is a very good brush, and um, we had uh, like enough of them for the kit, and I know I could do all of the project in it, and I've used this in classes and stuff before, and it is a fantastic, wonderful brush to have in your brush box. But the number four art stripper brush is just, it's, the point is so amazing. It's, it's so resilient. It's so extreme in its ability to do what we ask of it as artists that I can't say that there's even a comparison. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean when I paint her in. So hmm. Callie's asking me about these two brushes. This is the Art Sherpa number four, which is this kind of basic brush. And this is the uh, number 12. 
And standard brushes are not standard size because in, in long handles, this is also a 12. So you can see that it's sort of all over the place. When we talk brush sizes, if you're new to painting, you're not crazy. It is just that weird. Welcome to Wonderland, Dallas. <laughs> there are no standards. <laughs> Enjoy the journey. Touch everything. So I'll show you what I mean here. I've got to kind of do her in uh, ahead of time. And I'm going to paint her in in white first just to make sure that um, her skin tone uh, shows up over the cauldron. There was also another one. Um, Jessica Brendelinger said, could you make the skin color green like a felba and the bubbles another color? What would you suggest? Pink. Uh, I'm painting a sun on a beach for a white background. That is why I'm asking for the colors of the sun first time I work on a sun. Uh, generally, the sun has the lightest value in your surface. I often do my sun is almost a white. So sometimes it can get into the yellows. It really depends on what your reference is showing you, Lindsay. Um, what I would try to observe it and ask yourself, like, what are the colors am I seeing here? And then also ask that follow-up question is, why are they here right now the way that they are? So we're going to bring our little line down, if you remember, for elbows. Mm. And our little elbows down. And then there's a, a little bit of a line up and over. That's the forearm into the cauldron, right? And so that's what we're doing here, is just painting in this part of our little witch. Works quite well. And again, we're just going to paint her in white like this first. Whether you're painting her green or pink or yellow or brown or blue i could just go through the whole rainbow or rainbow or polka dotted um, it will help you to paint this area white first so that those colors show the way you would want them to but come up here and then i just bend that into the cauldron right we just show the little hand wrist bent into the cauldron mm. and you can see how it's helpful to even get the white on here because it would be really tough to cover this with skin tone on any level Right. Yeah, so you really have to do that underpainting in white to make that pop up, huh? You really do. You really, really do to make it pop up. Now, while this is all having a rest, I can do some fun fire. 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 I can also paint in a black hat. So I've got lots of wonderful stuff that I can do. For sure, for sure, for sure. I'm take some yellow over here and loosely mix it with my red. That's going to give me some great orange color. And I will just come here with my brush. Ooh, that brush looks very fiery. The way that the tip's loaded. Yes, doesn't it? It's kind of nice, loosely mixed tip. Now, what do you mean by that? Can you... So Talk. loosely mixed, and we have a video covering this, means that I haven't incorporated the paint thoroughly uh. into the brush, but I'm allowing it to mix onto the canvas. And if you're really new to painting and loosely mixed, and some of these terms feel confusing, there's a playlist I have where to start. Just do them in order. And um, I highly recommend that. You don't have to paint with me. Do those at all. They're not required. It's just a resource I have for you. I'm just taking this orange initially more to the red and I'm painting some fire. A lot of S and arabesque strokes, which are, uh, you know, calligraphy looking strokes, strokes that have a bit of a, a writing feel to them. When you're painting fire, the uh, colors away from the fuel tend to be warmer and oranger. And as they get closer to the fuel, they can go into the white, yellows, and even blues. Just doing these little S marks up. And you've got it. You can handle her fire. Mm. You can totally handle it. And you can even come over like 
I'll come over with some wren on the outer edges of the fire. Just to say that some of it has escaped. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. And it will show up a little bit more when you do that. So let that have a rest for a minute. It's a recuperating as it does. Now let's come up to the hat. So the hat is this little conical bit. And I do like it to kind of go up and bend over to the side as if there is um, a little kind of deflation or weight on it. Like maybe it's because she's above the steaming hot tub. Uh -huh. But a witch does not take her hat. She leaves her hat on. Right? She's not going to take it off. That's what I have decided in my imagination world that I painted this from. <laughs> so it's like cowboy boots. They don't come off. Yes. I feel like I kind of went into that space. And <laughs> as a young cowgirl who did that <laughs> in every horse trough on the property, what I would say, much to the chagrin of the horses who were not a fan, um, like who left this human child in my drinking water Would somebody come get her, <laughs> you know, no one mentioned to the kid, you know, you're swimming in spit. <laughs> <laughs> the horses were not pleased. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know you've been on a Walter Farley reading bridge today, girl, but you've got to stop playing black stallion. So we're going to come here and. Just give her that nice little point. Uh, we're going to get back to the circle that is around. Okay. Ellipse. Get that ellipse back. I have a good answer for a question that came up here. All right. Well, then I will let you uh, say the question out loud and answer it. Aren't okay. I awesome in the way that I do that? I just want to make sure you're at a place where you're not going to have it to. Oh, wait. But you said you have an answer. So I, you answer it. Okay. So what John's going to answer a question. Well, okay, so Grandma Smith said, could you Grandma add Smith. an option to pre-order on the website things that are out of stock? And my answer to that is no, with a caveat of why. So we did that. But then what happened was is our suppliers wouldn't necessarily ship with the service or the time speed that they said, or there would be an issue with what we got in. So we'd find out that we would be out of one of the things that we would need to complete, you know, two or three of orders. And those, of course, would drag out. And so what we're trying to do now is only put stuff up when it's ready to ship. So, and that has more to do because we want to make sure we get stuff directly out to you guys. But we can probably do something to, to let our patrons know a little bit ahead of time when things are going to go up. So yeah, that we can do. That we can work on. And we even may have some patrons. And, and maybe someday when we have more of our own, like when everything is under our control, we can print and like right now with the coloring books, that's a lot more under our control. Mm -hmm. So uh, good or bad, like we can fix it. Yep. Actually, I'm really happy with the way our coloring books are coming. I'm really happy with that too. Makes me happy about the other future books coming out. Having a chance. I'm just cleaning up anything there. Now, when I have the hat mostly, and I'm going to take a little of my blue over to my black, right? And I'll let a little white get into that mix. So blue, black, and white. And I'm going to come up the side of the hat to start. To start. It's not end all be all of everything, just up here, kind of maybe mm -hmm. painting a little. A little drama on her hat. Now you're putting some swir some like bent curves. How come? So when we curve the line of the stroke, it helps inform the shape of what's going on. You just went right behind there. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that there's a nice flow through, and I'll show you how oh. I clean that up. But I just want to make sure that the hat looks like, oh yeah, like that's part of the same ellipse. So if ever I've got to do that, then I just come back across and erase that through line. But you can see that that leaves me something of a beginning of some value. And then I can rinse out some. I'm going to get a little more blue into this mix and a little more white. And let's just come here and
and a little more white and blue over here as well. Giving that hat some zhuzh. Zhuzh. Does your hat have zhuzh? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to have zhuzh. You can put flowers on it. You can do whatever you want in your painting. Just so you know. You can do whatever you want in your painting. It's your painting. Rinse out thoroughly. Rinse out thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. Now we can come here and I'm going to pull out some yellow and start to paint in the fire some Ooh. of this yellow over. Wow. That really pops against those darker reds. Doesn't it? It makes it seem like, you know, fire. Fire. As Beavis would say. Fire. Beavis would be into this, I'm fire. sure. That was a weird Actually, show that I rewatched and was like, that is, that's one of those shows where I was like, different than I remember it. Oh, no, it's exactly how I remember it. And, and what I remember it, it was not for kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It was on MTV at night. I don't know. <laughs> it was not for I was kids. not supervised. <laughs> no. Don't, I'm grabbing some right here. Don't tell my mom that I outed her, but I was not supervised. Our, our generation, <laughs> like, cable came on, and we just, like, disappeared, and, like, MTV then educated us on... Life, the universe, and everything. I'm Some creating stuff. a nice orange here to kind of blend this out. I know. It's just, it was just crazy. Our time was just crazy. You know what I remember? I remember seeing television's sign off and seeing the national anthem play. Does that not still happen? I've, I'm uh, at a stage in life I can't stay up for the uh, national anthem. <laughs> so if you are still like, well, I do, but I, I, I'm on no. cable, and so there's no national anthem. No, so what happened there's was... Nine. In the, I guess, late 80s, infomercials happened, and they bought up all the nighttime, you know, late nighttime, and then all of a sudden, uh, gosh, what was his name? Um, I'll remember it in a minute, but the guy who, uh, uh, Fred, 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 what's his name? Uh, but he founded Nick at Night, and then all of a sudden, nighttime reruns became a thing, and nighttime space got filled up, and uh, anyway, so... John is educating you. You ready? You feel educated? I know stuff. Apparently, it's Thanksgiving Day in Canada. Do you use Sherpa soap for watercolor? You can use Sherpa soap for watercolor, but watercolor brushes tend to be natural hair. So you may want to use it infrequently just to cleanse, not mm. for every wash. Uh, uh, Lori Rainier said, At work yesterday, one of my customers came through the line with magenta and purple hair, and I commented that I loved it, and she reminded me of one of my favorite artists, and she said, The Art Sherpa. <laughs> Get it. Get it. You, you've given an entire group of people permission, Should all have permission to go fuchsia. Go as fuchsia as you want to go. You can fuchsia if you want to. Yeah, you can. You certainly could. I'm going to add a little uh, yellow over here, and then I'm going to put out some fresh white for, for the skin tones that I've got going on over here. As we're happening. As are happening. You know what they say. A little pink with a little yellow. You can fuchsia with your friends. Huh? You can fuchsia with your friends. But if you go green, you disappear in front of a green screen. It's true. Ask my daughter. <laughs> She knows. <laughs> so I'm going to continue. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of my quinacridone magenta mm. and my yellow medium azo, which you could just use cadmium or handsome medium or any good magenta. You're just trying to make a kind of an orange peach, and then you have white into it, and that gives you a very light skin tone. It's a bit uniform in its nature, but it'll work. Now this could, could be any of the three girls from Hocus. This could be any of them. Or it could be any girl anywhere. You could change this up entirely and, again, do a different skin tone, as was mentioned earlier. And I have uh, some videos on skin tones that you can watch if you wanted to change up the skin tone. Mm -hmm. It actually is not that hard. I'm just coming here and painting in the shoulders with the skin tone you can see why white was super helpful earlier yeah i think what it is is i miss vhf 
<laughs> no, you don't. Don't say crazy things. I'm going to get some red and come and play with my fire a little more. I'm going to put it out thickly so that it's really like popping. I'm doing it on these outer edges. Just remember you can adjust as you want to. Add color as you want to. No, the bubbles here mm. and around, we have to add some more bubbles. And we're going to do those uh, with our small bubbles. All right. Okay. I have this clean sponge here that I have ready, ready to paint. And um, so they do stain. They just are good. You just got to uh, wash the acrylic out. So I'm going to get some of my yellow and green together doing that twirl load that we are so fond of. And I'm going to take some of the bubbles around the side of the mm -hmm. cauldron. That's cool. Layering it up just a bit, creating that sense of, oh, the bubbles go to here. So just getting bubbles layered in front. Might add one there. Now, with the bubbles, you're going to take a round brush, and we're going to start with this. We're going to load up with the green, just the green. Load it up on your brush. Detail brush, round brush, whatever brush. And you're going to start to outline. And even kind of make the green stronger on one side. Mm, I see. You're adding bubble highlights. And shadows. And shadows. That's some extra bubble flavor there. Which is why I'm like, you know, you can paint these by hand if you want to. Some unexpected spiciness. Sometimes is what you got to do. Yeah, I have to say, this is the coolest hot tub ever. Just awesome hot tub. I, I don't know why any wife would hesitate saying, yes, a cauldron hot tub is the best idea in the world. I don't know why any wife would hesitate saying yes to anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I don't know why I'd find you a cauldron what? big enough. You know what? Nothing is as cool as macaques. Cacks who hot tub. Huh. The cacks who recently figured out you can get into hot springs and now there's a whole park for them. It's true. I Smart don't think, little macaques. I don't think we have macaques up here. I had to actually uh, think, what's we a macaque? We do, but they were illegally brought in. There's a bunch of snow monkey macaques in San Antonio because of wealthy women we're brought in there. exotic animals. We're not in Texas anymore. No, but don't, don't, don't do exotic animals. No, but we might have a bear in the, in, in the cauldron. No, but there's a wild bear. Yes. And I, am, I I don't want to feed it or no. own it or anything. So just coming here and you can see it just creates some density and uh, definition in all the bubbles. Now, you can do this with just any old brush. Yeah. And you can do this with any old color scheme. Mm. So you don't have to have green green. You can do purple or blue yeah, or orange. Any of the color schemes this will work with. Mm -hmm. I'm just making some little definition of it actually I there really, we go i really like your bubbles and your crystals yeah yeah so like an entire <laughs> scene of bubbles and crystals and maybe i'm going to take a little of my pink and purple together i think just in this weird way and add some white and i think i'm going to come down this fire and make this this sort of weird implied little cast down mm. prettier and make it prettier Let's make it prettier. Another color. Another color often makes things prettier. Rinse out the thoroughly. Right? Mm, Donna loves this bubbling cauldron. And let's add some white to our fire. I'm in love with it too. Just a couple of places. White is where there's a fuel source. So often there'll be a little spot of hot fire. Down low, where it goes. Maybe little sparks will come up sometimes. A little more. All right. Now, down her hair, I'm going to start with yellow and red together. 
And let's begin coming down the hat. You can have some hair maybe goes forward over her back. Probably don't want to pull the hair all the way down to the fire. <laughs> Make it seem like she's in danger. Okay, rinse that out. Gonna take a couple layers, so we'll let that have a dry. And we're gonna get some clean, fresh white. And we're gonna do this. Shadow. It's a highlight highlight, they're counterposed highlight. Top bottom. That's how we're highlighting our bubbles. Mm. Bubbles are a lens and they, they reverse the world around them. Yeah. So uh, what's on top is on the bottom. Top and bottom. That's nice. That go roll. Mm -hmm. Having its little moment. Having its little it. happy self. I'm going to dry this so I don't drag wet paint everywhere. All right. And we'll finish it up. So, yeah, just make sure you thoroughly dry between those layers. That way you're not dragging any paint or doing any of that kind of stuff. I'm going to make sure it all stays nice and crisp and clear. So, thank you guys again for all joining us here. We really do appreciate it. It's a. Uh, there she goes. I'm something. Take a little more of my white, pink, image of yellow. A little more. Mm, Never yeah. be stressed if you need another coat. That coat really made a big big difference it does sometimes it takes two or three remember we're gonna come back and line this in a minute oh yeah oh the lining always does such a cool thing it really does and it will here you just want to make sure that you you know not seeing the cauldron underneath her skin because that'll <laughs> mess with it hair is kind of a crazy mess right now but don't worry it's it's <laughs> in that undercoat stage where you gotta it get some It really layers. is in its undercoating stage. Undercoated stage. Coming up with a lining along the arm. Help see what it is. I'll um, show you guys with the liner that came in the kit. All right. This is just a Ooh. small detail liner. Sometimes this is all you need to make things go easier for yourself. And again, if drawing is not your thing, don't worry. You can absolutely... come in with, you know, the traceable and have that give you a hand. I'm going to also come along the hair and and I talk about some of the tendrils.
Take a little of my orange here. Orange and yellow. Okay, I'm gonna dry that. All right. See, I like how that outlining just pops, pop, pops her together. It really makes it look cool. I kind of, I dig it. So make sure you yeah, just get get thoroughly dry there between those two things. And make a bright orange, a bright, bright orange. Finding a little bit of that hair. Notice that the brush strokes kind of all follow a little flow. And that's how we sort of talk about the hair there. You can always get back into the red. Mm. And then I'll take a little bit of the yellow orange and some of my white. I'll make a bright, bright highlight. And that kind of helps us see the flow wow. of the hair. That's nice. That's flowing. All right. I think oh, we did it, guys. That really turned out nice. Just a fun little painting. And it under an hour. And under an hour. Look wow. at us go. It's, who knew we could do that? <laughs> Man, well, I'm impressed. Are you impressed? I love this one. This is great. I was real happy with this one, too. That I think, for me, this year's 13 Days was a real surprise. Even the weird, creepy painting that came out of nowhere, I ended up liking. Just sign it up. Goodness gracious. Mm, so I want to address something real quick. Mm -hmm. Yashika's uh, art teacher said, you have to draw. You can't trace to be a good artist. I challenge that because all the Where great is? tracers. Who said that? So, uh, this, so Yashika, uh, yeah, Yashika said, uh, but tracing is not good if you want to be a good artist, as said by my art teacher. Well, Yashika, it depends on what your goals are. Really candidly. Uh, when you're in art school a long, long time, you're going to realize that all things, uh, design, color theory, uh, sculptural relationships, just everything that you will cover in art, um, you'll very quickly realize that there are entire art forms for which drawing is not part of the practice and that there are many till skilled and talented artists that don't draw. They work in a medium that doesn't require it. They work in a different process that doesn't require it, but their artwork's still really valid. That said, drawing is awesome. And while tracing is not cheating, that is just an art technique and it's something to help you not. See, here's the thing, okay, is that if you don't create, you don't grow in that creative process. And so many people are told that crazy statement, you have to draw hmm. to be an artist. That's a crazy statement. Just anything say. about art, that's a crazy statement. But it yeah. is great to draw. Yeah. It's wonderful to draw. You should totally learn it, just like you should learn acrylic and you should learn every technique that you can learn and you should learn everything about color theory you can learn. But you don't want any of those things to become a roadblock instead of a building block. And when you say to anyone, well, you've got to draw to be a good artist, what you're really doing is you're giving them a roadblock instead of a building block, instead mm. of saying, you know, this is all really cool and you're doing fantastic. But if you add drawing to that skill set, that's going to help you actualize your imagination. It's going to help you make corrections in images if the photograph wouldn't register well. There's like so many things that drawing will help you do. It'll help you see value in relationships of objects and understand the nature of perspective and 
how shading works and how line is expressive. So it's not that there's no respect for drawing here. I have a lot. Mm. I just know that it is a technique, not the technique. And in art, sometimes it's presented as the technique. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Figure drawing class is super fun. Yes. And who doesn't love doing gesture? So definitely I do encourage it. I'm just saying don't let it stop you. And don't let people tell you that it's cheating to use a traceable because anyone who does any 300 pound full press, full sheet watercolor paper that spent more than $50 on it probably has done it all of their renderings and studies and designs on not the expensive paper. And when I put it on that expensive paper, I'm going to use a transfer method that does not risk my material. And you better hope you're good at tracing so that you know how to do it. It's like when people tried to say to Boris Vallejo, where you're projecting or cheating. Boris Vallejo can draw circles around all those people. That isn't the issue. The issue is the commission has to get out on time. Mm. That's the issue. Sometimes it's about professionalism too. So it's just, yes, do it, but don't make it like, wow, that's a soapbox for me. John knew that mm. was coming. Oh, they were asking about highlights on the cauldron. Oh, thank you. That is what I missed. I got so distracted and you guys caught it and that is what it is. So I'm going to put out white. Ignore the fact that I've signed it. Meow, 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 meow. Ignore it. And meow, the fact meow, that meow, I meow. monologue like a villain. And let's put some highlights on. So I'm going to load some white onto my brush. And I got a bubble in front of this one. So I'll just move the highlight over mm. a bit. Boop, boop. To there. And let's put a little highlight right there. Doo, 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 doo. That's a nice little highlight. These are nice highlights. Let's add a little wiggle highlight there. There you go. I like that wiggle highlight. We're going to add a curve and then a line down. Dee Dee caught that, by Thank the way. Thank you, Dee Dee. That is really good, and we want those highlights. So I would say that's the thing to pay attention to. Uh, Paul Neary says, Boris who? Boris Vallejo uh, was one of the great <laughs> fantasy realist artists of the 1980s. He belongs to the group like uh, Olivia and uh, Soriyama. They were just artists that had a lot of skills before even digital became part of a surface and yeah, but they, they he made the poster for uh high fantasy america uh no the family vacation one the chevy chase vacation one. Oh, um family vacation? family vacation yeah that's a poster with her holding leg that's actually, that's actually that might be where you would know it from but you can google him and he does a lot of fantastic stuff and my point is is you know the guy can draw <laughs> we're not all questioning that if he uses projection on occasion to speed through doing a monolithic presentation for a client, that's not cheating. That's technique. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. I don't want to tell anybody. I mean, Camus Obscura, the girl with a pearl earring, right? <laughs> Come yeah. on. They weren't that good at drawing. Oh, yeah. Of course it was projection. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Yashika <sighs> totally is on your team, on your side. She was just recanting that that's what her... Chill, her the, the, her childhood teachers were saying oh her. girl i and we would be good even if you thought that first of all know that we would be good even if you if you were believing that and thank you for bringing up that point um because uh teachers do say that to children teachers yeah. say crazy things to children all the time in regards to their art wildly unqualified things wildly unqualified things so yay for all the art teachers that are still out there in the schools taking that important education to kids because imagination matters is the only way we solve problems we don't know how to solve today. We must imagine <laughs> the solution. So let's encourage imagination. Yes. And encourage. not only ourselves, but our young. And thank you for such a powerful question. Um, Yashika, I'm sorry, I call. <laughs> we had such a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but this is, John knew he was doing this. This is my weird soapbox. Well, yeah, no, we I want to make sure. I want to make sure that, like, you know, because there's no wrong way in art, and mm. a lot of times we but pretending get, you're another yeah. artist and putting your signature on it is definitely wrong. You should never ever do that. That's super shady. But even being derivative isn't a crime. It's yeah. just being derivative. The only thing that's a crime is forgery and fraud and copyright theft. All of and, which the court systems have a, a, a system to address. And to be honest, once you take it to that really high level, it becomes an art in and of itself. So, you know, you're just sort of playing in the deep end of the art pool art, at Did that you point. just come up with an argument for the forgers? I think it's, I mean, like, look, at the point that you're able to knock off a 200-year-old painting to the point where, like, 
people who go to college for most of their life can't tell the difference. Okay, that guy is an artist. But the, anybody doing modern art, anything from uh, acrylic on, that is not because I, you can't. You can't. Carbon dating. As soon as the carbon dating is over, we will have no idea where it comes to true. modern art. Uh, weirdly, all the nuclear explosions apparently were very See, helpful. I is, just um, learned recently because <laughs> the carbon. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh. But I, I'm I only guess gonna... radiation had a good side effect. Kind of. We'll just only buy performance art, so it's only bank ski for us. I That's don't know. what you know. Can I be honest? I'm a little afraid of bank ski. Uh, like, we, it I, must, like, awesome. like, I have a feeling like. I can't wait. To, I can't there wait is to another just, story. There's a level there's there. There's more. There's more to the story. <laughs> I don't know what more. it is, but it's going to be something that people to, like talk about in hush rooms. Like, do you remember Bangsky and what they found in the basement? <gasps> you know who it is? Yeah. It's. No. I don't know what you're going to say, but I deny you. No, okay. I'm going to say thank you to Sylvia Bohr, who was so sweet and thought to Super Chat for us. Thank you so oh, much. Thank we appreciate you. that greatly 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 thank right. you be good to yourselves guys it's a crazy world out there so take time to uh paint what was it to, to ah oh the, uh painting for stress really even oh give me just two seconds um he's gonna find it uh painting to stop depression Painting to stop depression. So if you're painting today to stop depression, remember that it's still important to work with a, a team of medical professionals that are there and on your team for your health um, always. But yes, painting is a great tool to add to that to help you get through. So definitely make some time for creativity. I don't know what John is doing right now. Oh, my screen oh, is going is. crazy. I was trying to find out where my control page was so I could see what, because you asked me a question and I clicked away. <laughs> John's like popping up on the I'm screens. Like, I'm like, am the, I supposed to no, read there, something here? No, no, I no, don't no, know. no, no. I was, you asked me a, a question, so I clicked to another screen and then it, it messed up your preview. I so love teaching her on my life. Thank you guys for being a part of that process. <laughs> Be good to yourselves. Take care. Make time to take care. Be good to each other because we're all going through it. And I want to see you at an easel really soon, especially tomorrow, because we're going to do ghosts in a bottle. Okay, bye-bye.